Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. You got Chris Jericho, who's La Champion, and I am El Captain of this show. Except my show does better ratings. As for like the square, you know, like pound for pound fighters in our division, we're doing really well. Um, is our demographic like the 56 to 85? Like our grandparents who like fully support this? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight is Friday night means it's hoodie night. Chris, nice hoodie. Thank you. I got to come down with it. It's a little sinus, a little, little sinus problem. I'm, I don't have a sinus problem. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I got to support my man. You know, you didn't think I wanted to do this for you? I wouldn't. I'm not gonna make you wear the hoodie. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to ruin a wrestling shirt with like Vicks on my chest. <laughs> if he's going down, I'm going down swinging um, and crossing streams. All right, <laughs> so done that before. AEW -A -A was it a Canes game? <laughs> did you ever get that bum check? I did. It's cancer. <laughs> so you do have the testicular fortitude. I do. <laughs> it's the pineapple. <laughs> uh, or grapefruits that's what McMahon is <laughs> chocolate titties <laughs> alright we open up with FTR why is this match 60 minutes man I thought it was 20 minute brushes with greatness no this one was for um, the title so like the best friends called them out and challenged them last week remember they came out with the weenie shirt it's only a brush of greatness if FTR challenges like graces them with the you know their challenge gotcha it's a little interesting i did not pick up on that at all mm -hmm. um so what do you think of this match overall because honestly i think the teams worked really well together um i thought that uh you know chuck taylor being the sack of shit that he is he carried pretty good for that match I thought it was he a let, very good match. He let Trent take his ass whooping fucking for – the match went, what, 30 minutes, 20 minutes? Uh, I think it was – I think I saw 24 minutes and, like, 32 seconds, something like that. Okay, so 24 minutes. That means uh, that means uh, Trent took 19 minutes of an ass whooping in that match because Chuck was on the floor. He get punched in the face on the floor. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> I thought it was a great match. Um, and like I always say, the first match always dictates how the show is going to go. And – I thought for an anniversary show, this was a really good show. I thought it was really well written. Yeah. Um, uh, I like the the brain buster on the outside that I think was a cash gave to Chuck Taylor. Um, I think that's a very underrated move. Mm -hmm. um, I like the arcade spot with Trent and Cash on the outside, um, where he goes through the arcade machine when Kip's playing it. I think that's that was. It, it plays – so it gets best friends away from the storyline they had with FTR, and it gets them in another storyline. It transitions, like, seamlessly. I have no comment on Miro and AEW at this time. But you want to know what, though? I, I think they're going to show him as the Bulgarian brute now um, with that promo and the way he squashed the Broke Usos in the next match. So you're telling me Joey Janela couldn't get that Bulgarian brute out of Rusev? So you're basically telling me Joey Janela is fucking worthless in wrestling. He no, can't get himself over and he can't get anybody else over. I didn't say that. Because Rusev, Miro, Miro sucked when he wrestled Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss. And it wasn't a shot of Sonny Kiss. I, I Personally, Sonny Kiss is growing on me. I'm okay with it. I like him. He's doing really well in wrestling. The whole fucking split leg thing off the rope, not a fan. Not a fan. But uh, overall, I I like Sonny Chris as a wrestler. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, before we jump ship, I mean, FTR gets the win with the interference with the belt. Um, it ends with Trent and Chuck doing giving with the fans what they want, the hug at the end. And then you see at the top of the stage Penelope pulling Miro. And he comes in and destroys both truck, Chuck and Trent. Yeah. Um, and then they get on the mic and he goes, you good friends. Good friends. This ain't over. You're going to repay for machine. 
Yeah, he says you broke my friend's shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, there was a small part in me, and I, I want to get back to the match but before we do that. Uh, there was a small part in me when Trent was like looking at Chuck, and he was like, "Hey," I was like, "Kick him, kick him in the fucking face." Just fucking split from this fucking loop. I, I was and deep inside me. I felt the heel turn. I thought we were gonna get a Seth Rollins chair in the back out of nowhere. Disappointed, but um, I, I don't know the match. There were certain spots in it, man. And for me, one of the spots was uh, there was a spot where uh, Chuck had uh, Chuck Taylor had cash up and or in one way or another, and Tully grabbed Chuck's legs and pulled him out. And he, like, went down, and as he was doing that, Cash was going behind Chuck, and Ka- and Chuck was, like, trying to grab Tully. But the whole time, like, instead of letting just someone pounce on your back, he's doing this. He's, like, like trying to gr- – and it's, like, why are you looking back, man? Just take the fucking bump. Why are you trying right. to time it? You obviously look back the whole time, and you still stood there and let him hit it. If you're right. looking back, move out of the way. Yeah, you know, but, you, you, just- you know, on, on that retrospect, though – um if I can remember correctly, was Tully still holding Chuck's leg? No, Tully or Chuck had Tully by the neck like this. Right, right. But at, I mean, I think that spot would have worked a little bit better. If, maybe he held his leg. I don't know. Maybe I missed if, it. Maybe if he I was it. still holding the leg, like, I think he was holding the leg, and and Chuck was reaching for him to try, and he was looking to see if if Man, he was going to get. Maybe his I line. missed the leg hold, but at yeah. the end of the day, still Trent still a second. Sure. <laughs> or Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. I don't. It's Chuck I don't like, man. The guy's fucking bugs. <laughs> it's because he looks like Nate. I. That's got to be what it is. Yeah, that's got to be what it is. So he, he's a anyway. Kentucky gentleman. Jesus, oh, I fucking hate that guy. So anyway, so Miro and Sabian stay in the ring after uh, cutting the uh, "You broke my friend's shit" promo. Which, and- by the way, my son repeated back to me. Nice, good man, good man. Little Brody Flair, woo! Yeah. Youngest, youngest and, and ride, long, longest line. And he did it in Miro's voice too, which was actually kind of funny. I had to hold it together so I didn't laugh, but I can't give him like a swat in the side and said, "You don't repeat that stuff." <laughs> Jesus Christ! God damn, what are you saying that? Way? Right. Um, so it ended up being Miro and Sabian versus some dude and Roman Reigns' cousin. No, I, I said it was Miro and Kip versus the Bro- Broke Usos. It's Broke Usos. <laughs> There's a relation to Roman Reigns somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> didn't catch your name. My bad. Kind of. I know. A, I know it was kind um, of a long squash. It took like three or four minutes. I figured it was gonna be like less than a fucking sixty seconds with them. It was Lee Johnson, the guy that was the head of um, MJF's uh, campaign trail. Oh, was but, it? That was the guy that got thrown into the wall. He never got in the match. Oh, that's reusing them, man. It's like South Park, just reusing characters over here. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, while we were getting back to, to the Miro situation, I think they're going to build Miro to be like this. Brute is – it was a long squash match, but he was in it for 98% of the match, and he did all the damage, tagged Kip in, Kip did a splash, tagged out, and then he did the Steiner recliner on him. Yeah. What is what is Miro call it? It's not Steiner Collider. Game over. Yeah, what was it called before that? Um It was something like the Bulgarian something. It was Yeah, where she was like, Miro Crush. Yeah. I was never a big fan of Rusev. But I loved it. Got the US title, the modern day fucking uh Iron Sheet kind of deal where he hated the country, but he had the title. You know, it was I liked it. I was just not a big fan of it because came out on a fucking tank at WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean that doesn't that doesn't force me to like him though, because Shotzi Blackheart comes out on a tank. Don't you fucking compare that entrance, which I love that entrance to that god oh god that godforsaken Jezebel. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but that's all I'm saying is like I don't know. It, it, it reminded me too much of the Iron Sheik and Sergeant Slaughter when he had that run in where run with uh, John Cena. Yeah, no, of course. That's exactly what they're going for. Yeah, and it's just, yeah. Well, right after that Miro match was like pure excitement because my man, Jake the Snake, hey, man, 
Hey, man, what you doing, man? Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him, Lance. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> this, this is a $20 snake fest. Come on, man. Here, put it on. He kept trying to hand it to somebody. I didn't know who he was handing it to. He's like, put it on. I'm like, me? Like, you want me to it? He was handing it to Archer. Like, I didn't understand that. I, was like, I didn't get it either, man. It's like, fuck. Don't yeah, rip I, this one. Rip this one. I don't like it. No. Come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, we can no. sell that. We can sell that in Duval, man. We can sell that in Duval. Get some crack. Right. Uh, you, so you need some more meth, don't you, Lance? Come on, man. This was my notes. Backstage, Lance Archer beating down Mox and jo- Jake just holding a snake, uh, snake vest and rambling words. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he reminds me – I know this is going to sound like an oxymoron, but he reminds me of a <laughs> – a sober version, sober redneck version of Boom Power from King of the Hill. Really? That's what you just <laughs> 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 We were just walking around last night, dude. Chili's ribs. Chili's ribs. I like the barbecue song. Oh. Hey, See, he's a sober redneck version <laughs> of. <laughs> Boom hour. He's like, man, come on, man. Come on, man. The whole smell border, man. Come on, man. Come on. I'm a snake. You know, like Brandy, I'm going to put my snake on you. Come on. I like the chocolate. McDonald's got the, <laughs> McDonald's got the McChickens for a dollar now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, can't wait for that McRib to come back. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim, you want anything? <laughs> <laughs> Snatch off our ass. All right, so we go from that to MJF, my man. How's it look? Does it look good? Does it look good? It's got to look good. Hey, by the way, by the way, uh, by the way. In New York, this guy in the alley said, hey, I got it for a good price, bro. Straight out of the factory. I said, really? I go, how much? It's like 20. I'm like, give it to me. Mm. (laughs) Oh, you know, okay. I know you're going to love it. You're going to love the promo and everything like that. But can we go to see, like, how much our show gets watched by the upper management in in AEW? That how good Jericho looked when he came out. Um. So <laughs> I've been cracking on Jericho's way for a while now, right? <laughs> and they he, pointed it out on this saying. show. Um, you know, and it's just like they think we're bullshit, man. <laughs> like they think, they, they think we're bullshitting, man. I cannot understand like how like every every time I say you know AEW watches our show, <laughs> I'm not fucking kidding. It's not a joke. It's for serious. It's for serious. Like I just I said last week how shitty Jericho looks, and the moment that he comes out, the first thing MJF points out is, man. Speaking of fit, doesn't this, he look fit? He looks great, right, guy? And it's like, what the fucking spit in my face, Cody? I'm done with this shit. I'm fucking done, man. And you know what the funny part is? Every CCW wrestler that come on here, we pleaded our case to them. They listen. Pharaoh listened to us. Nasir, you listen. Will Austin listen. Bote, and we've told every one of them. And it's just like, we're just getting more and more of it every week. I'm just yeah, keep proving it. Yeah, it's like the craziest thing. And I mean, like, that was what stuck to me during that whole promo. It's like he pointed out how oh, good. I'm like, I didn't even like, I pictured, I, I like blocked out everything that was said. And I'm like, like, they oiled up his abs, like, yes. to make them glisten. And I'm like, I put MJF brings up how great Jericho looks. Is that because he heard me fat bashing Jericho? I'm fat. It's okay. I'm allowed to fat bash people. Like, <laughs> fuck, man. Yeah. Pissed. I turned. I, I I had to separate the show in two spots. I turned it off and then came back to it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it I was, was a so good promo. It was it was a very funny promo. Um, mm-hmm. I don't get the whole let's have a steak dinner. I, so we're so we're laying in bed watching that last night, and Sam's like, "What's a steak dinner?" And I'm like, "It's a steak dinner." And she goes, "Yeah, but why'd they say it like that?" She's like, "What does he mean, steak dinner?" And I'm like, "Sam, fucking steak dinner, steak dinner." <laughs> and she's like, "Is it a match?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> what's wrong with you?" <laughs> like, hey, 
I don't know, man. It's like I don't know. I don't know. I just you're well, on. You want a steak dinner? You're on. It's leading up to a match at full gear. Why not just have like where Wardlow and Hager wrestle and if Wardlow wins and MJF is in inner circle if Hager wins and he's not in inner circle then you're going to have a, uh, uh, you know have that this Wednesday and then if Hager wins and have MJF throw a tantrum and then call out White, uh, Jericho because that's ultimately what's going to happen they're going to wrestle at full gear mm-hmm. you know like, guess who's wrestling next week Hager <laughs> and Wardlow <laughs> spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. Makes no what sense. What did Paul Heyman say? It's not a spoiler. <laughs> no, he said. Yeah. And, well, that's another one. That's a fucking. I read that today. Or, yeah, I think I read it today that Roman Re- Reigns says he's not a heel or a face. So, what are oh. you? He's stone cold, man. He's yeah. trying to be. No, he reminds me, like, I've seen clips, and he reminds me of um, the, that movie uh, Hobbs and Shaw. With the Rock and Jason Statham, <laughs> like, oh, it's we don't know if they're good guys or bad guys, but they're just fighting crime. Like, <laughs> what the uh, hell? Can we, can we talk about Sammy's jacket, dude? It was hilarious, the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. And Sammy Guevara takes it so well, he takes yeah. it so well. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. He really is. It's so funny. And I love it when um, Santana grabs the mic and he's like, we don't want you in Inner Circle. <laughs> Can we go How serious now? he got. Yeah, how serious yeah. he got. He went from ah! <laughs> All right. like checking his watch like halfway through. And then yeah. Like, Can we go now? <laughs> um, I, I thought it was I, – I, I, I love the promo. Uh, Jericho coming out, like the beginning pissed me off, but Sammy kind of kept me through it. But and it then was, at the very end, the stake there killed me. It, it was a it, it roller was coaster of emotions. Right. It was a funny promo. I think the reason why they brought him out is to show off Jericho as his body mm-hmm. and also to have the crowd sing the entrance. Yeah. Because that could have been done in the locker room. Yeah. You're yeah. 100% correct. And, you know, it's so funny. Every time Jericho comes out and they sing, they, they sing his song, he's just straight-faced every time. Turns a face in an instant, and then boom, right back to heel. Mm-hmm. He's the only guy that can do that right now. I think he's the only guy ever that can do that. Yeah. The guy, is, he's just a face and a heel at the same time. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So He's um, the only one that can say that he doesn't. he's not a heel or a face. Yeah, you're 100% correct. Um, this next promo I skipped. I was oh. uncomfortable. Um, I read uh, reviews on it before I watched it, and I was uncomfortable. So when it got to me, I skipped it. But apparently, Tony Schiavone's nipples uh, made a uh, debut. Yeah, they look like fucking. <laughs> they look like freckles on like a did ginger's look, back. Did they, did they look like Cardi B's nipples? Because I saw Cardi B's nipple this week. Did it look like Cardi B's nipple? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I can compare it to trash, but. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. There's some holes in those holes. There's some holes in those holes. Um, <laughs> wet ass possums. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wet, what ass possums? Poss- <laughs> wet ass possums. Um, but uh, I would have loved to seen Reba get waxed. But that's just me. Dude, you are not the only one. Can we? I did see a screenshot. Somebody screenshot it, posted it in one of my groups, and the question was, "Why does Britt Baker's feet look like that?" Because they look, apparently it looked weird. And this guy posted a picture, and they were like, the pinky one and the one next to it were like really far apart, and they're both like the same size. Her feet look do not look great. <laughs> I mean, the I'm only thing I, the only thing I'm I could think of is like you try to put your feet in wrestling boots and try to wrestle like day in and day out, you know. <laughs> like, I mean, Sam goes, Sam goes, what happened to her lips? And I was like, what do you mean? She's, she's like, she got stung by a bee. I was like, no, those are her lips. Didn't they just get done? No, her nose got done. Oh, her nose got done. Mm-hmm. She's gonna look like a uh, fucking what's her face? Who's the one dating Batista? 
Dana Brooke. She'll be going to look like Dana Brooke in like six months. Oh, they're I'm dating? Like, yeah. Oh, that's how far away from like WWE I am. <laughs> yeah, well, her boyfriend choked on a chicken wing. Like, yeah. Like three yeah. years ago. And she was like, oh, man, please don't die. I'll give you CPR. Yeah. And she's like, oh, Dave's dick. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I can get Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy and write, yeah. write his cooktails. I'm like, oh, yeah. He we're fucking assholes. Choked. We he are actually choked with a pillow over his face. It's kind of weird. We are pieces of shit, Chris. Yeah, oh yeah. I've been told. <laughs> um, so, I've been told. I've been told by people on this podcast so. that you're a piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> not me, right? <laughs> uh, tomato, anyway, tomato, tomato. Next up, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is your match. I loved it. All yours, pal. I loved it. Cody versus Orange Cassidy. I love how it started. Um, as much as I like the OC versus Jericho matches, I like this one a little bit more. Um, don't like the time limit draw. Um, like we talked about before we started recording, this I think AEW dropped the ball with this match. They should have had OC turn heel. Should have had him turn heel. When they had the chance. Oh, I'm... First of all, what happened to Cody's hair? He's not fucking with the Dark Order anymore, so it doesn't need to be dark no more? Is that what happened? No, it's, um, I think he already finished um, filming Hotel Transylvania 4. Because um, I think he's doing the real-life version. Or it's the remake of the Lincoln Vampire movie. I don't know what he was doing. I don't fucking know. Wait, are you serious? Uh, Hotel Transylvania? No. Hey, Hotel oh, Trans- you're fine. <laughs> Hotel Transylvania is animated, dummy. <laughs> I thought they were doing like a real life version of it, man. I mean, no. You fucking worked me. You shooting no. from the no. hip. I'm pretty sure Adam Sandler would be doing that since he's the voice <laughs> of Dracula. Dude, fuck Adam Sandler. That guy's not funny anymore. Hey, by the way, he turned, stand- he, he turned 54 the other day. And, not, and he hasn't been funny in 20 years. I don't know. His, his, some of his movies on Netflix were pretty funny. No, there was one I saw uh, with a wedding, and he was like the dad, and Chris Rock was there. That was funny. What are you talking about? It was all right. Sandy Wexler. Were... Sandy Wexler was actually really funny. Um, Uncut Gems wasn't a funny movie, but it was actually really good. I I can't watch Do movies over? anymore. Do I'm over dad. with, I fall with David Spade. Do over with David Spade movies. when they're yeah. having the threesome and. Um, uh, David Spade keeps looking at the guy from waiting, the cook from waiting, and he's like, "You're making too much eye contact. You're making too much." <laughs> David Spade has not been funny since, you know, you know, what? Since Chris Farley died. Now here, I have a question. Uh, I know this is off topic, but. Can you imagine if Chris Farley didn't die and Will Ferrell was in those movies with Chris Farley? Whew, man. Some good fucking movies. Dude, they'd be making Black Sheep 12. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be some good fucking movies, yo. They'd be making Black Black Sheep. <laughs> you can't do that in 2020, man. <laughs> <laughs> Blacker than Black Sheep. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can't do that in 2020, but you can have blackish and rich crazy rich crazy rich Asians or something like that as a movie. Is it really a movie? Yeah. Yeah. Could have dude, imagine Tommy Boy now. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's his name? Yeah. Wasn't even he wasn't even in that movie. Uh he wasn't listed in that movie. Um cool. the bro the stepbrother who was the bad guy in Tommy Boy. I forget his fucking name. Um Rob Lowe? Rob Lowe. You know Rob Lowe's not credited for that movie? You know, Rob Lowe wasn't in Step Brothers. No, uh, in um, Tommy Boy. Yeah, yeah. you said the, 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 the guy from Step Brother wasn't credited oh. for that movie. I'm like, he wasn't no, in it. Oh, I'm sorry. Tommy Boy. <laughs> I was say the guy from Parks and Rec was the, the brother in Step Brothers. Yeah. No, Tommy Boy. Why isn't he credited with it? Because he didn't have a he, oh he wasn't on screen long enough. That's probably the reason why. No, it was another movie or something like that, and there was a contract issue. 
He wasn't allowed to be credited. In it. it was something weird anyway. Fuck, what, what podcast are we doing? Our movie podcast? No, <laughs> we got into it, guys. But, sorry. <laughs> but, um, but they should have they, they, they should have turned Orange Cassidy then. When he grabbed the belt from Silver, he should have hit either Arn Anderson or Cody with it. Yeah, that um, that spot there would have been a good spot for it. I didn't think of the whole uh, turning heel thing until you just brought it up. But now, like, looking back on the match, I did watch the match. I did not, you know, just skip this match. I did watch this match. And it was – I liked it. Um, it felt very competitive. And, honestly, when it was over, I thought, okay, we're going to get Cody, Darby, and uh, Orange Cassidy for, at full gear in a three-way. And I thought that's where it was going. And I think that actually could still get there. If they go to another time limit draw. How many fucking time limit draws have there been in the show in one year? I feel like I've seen like five of them already. Like, I mean, I wouldn't mind it if they had the same kind of match. Dude, time limit draws were not a thing, though. Like, that, it's never can you happened. move? Can you move your scarf? It's blocking your face. <laughs> no, I'm here. You look like Wilson from Home Improvement. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, yo, neighbor. <laughs> There, there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> like all I can see was like it's like this. You're like, it was like you're like peeking over. Hey. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing over there? Jesus is watching. <laughs> hey, hey, man, you want to buy this snakeskin vest? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, man. Hey, you got some crack. <laughs> I'm sorry, can Jake. Imagine, can you imagine if Jake the Snake was like the, the oh, this is gonna be sound bad, but can you imagine if he was like the child molester that lived next door? <laughs> hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs> Come here. Yeah. I just dropped that. <laughs> hey man, you guys want some candy? <laughs> we gotta stop. We gotta stay on track. We gotta stay on track. No especially more Tommy given, boy. Especially given his dad. Like that was like <laughs> my dad raped thirteen year olds. Yeah, and that's my sister. So. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That fucking that whole movie fucked me up. If you have not seen Beyond the Ring or Beyond, Beyond the, the Mat, mat yeah. Beyond the Mat, you need to go see it. You get Jake <laughs> the Snake pissing in a bucket. <laughs> you get uh Darren Drawsdaw pu- puking in WWF headquarters. Which really wasn't even puke, it was just like water. Yeah, he was like, um, and I think <laughs> I read, I think I read like recently that that was all staged. Like Draws was already signed. Really? Yeah. Mm, that's interesting. Surprising like, man went for that because <laughs> he debuted right after the movie came out. Oh, did he? Yeah, like literally, like a week later. And you know what sucks is that movie was, that wasn't in theaters for that long. I think it was only in the movies in theaters for a week. Did you see it in theaters? Yes, I did. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, First night it came out, and it and the, and the, it was I went to Movie Co. and it was packed, like sold out. Really? Yeah. Um, that was in the heyday of wrestling. I was like, you yeah. know, yeah, very true. So. Um, all right, cool. Uh, so let's move into. Oh, you got to finish this match. Oh yeah, uh, I like the dark order spot because <laughs> they were on the outside one time, and um, I like the camera was panning towards the heel side of the crowd, and I saw all of dark order, and I'm like, they're never in the crowd. Like, why would <laughs> they be there? And I'm like, oh, they must be getting involved in the match. Yeah, when John Silver got, when they got kicked out, John Silver was like, "What? What?" <laughs> and the ref and Bryce Renfer kept pointing at him and said, "No, you're out of." And and Silver kept going, "No, you're out of here. You're out of here." <laughs> Silver's great, man. I I like Silver a lot. He's awesome. Um, God, we can get him on, then we can verify if our show is really getting watched. Hey, I'm in the production you. meeting, in the production meeting, is Cody like, "All right, let's see what the fat guy said." <laughs> they all put their phones on. They all click the yeah. like episodes, and they have like a note sheet, notepad. <laughs> you get the first twenty minutes. You get the next twenty minutes. You get the third twenty minutes. <laughs> the the only problem with getting John Silver on is he's gonna be like sitting above the camera, like up here, because of all the phone books that he's gonna have to sit on. <sighs> So do you guys like the show? That's <laughs> yeah, a good show, right? <laughs> Did you like me on camera for five minutes? 
<laughs> you're out. <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, so yeah, the match ends in a draw. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get that revenge match. In two and they weeks. kept showing Darby yeah. Allen in the sting position. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I right. get that. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so we like, move again, back. they could have done that in the backstage, like panning to him. Yeah. While he's looking at a TV. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to get that factor in there, man. This is WCW. He's the new sting. Yeah. I mean, Yo, I, if he's in the rafters next week, I'm done. <laughs> if he zip lines down like Owen Hart, he's done. <laughs> Move. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We already established we're going to hell. It's cool. He zip lines down the skateboard. <laughs> you know, I've always heard that Vince McMahon has never asked the talent to do something that he wouldn't do. We all just saw the video of Rob Gronkowski afraid to take mm-hmm. him from 10 feet. McMahon just got up there and dropped. Um, apparently, he did it for Money in the Bank for Alistair and Ray to show mm-hmm. them, hey, just fucking go. You'll be all mm-hmm. right. Um, I saw a video of him doing it for Shawn Michaels, uh, zip lining WrestleMania. He did it first. There was a cool video of him doing that. He did it um, the, when the, um, the end, uh, when Paul Bearer got uh, buried in the cement. Uh-huh. Um, he got in that um, to show that you, you're not really getting buried in cement. It's just holographics, you know, and everything like that. Um, but what blows my mind about what you just said about Grinkowski is <laughs> Rob won't take a fall from 10 feet, but he can eat a handful of mollies and dance shirtless in Arizona mm-hmm. after a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've done it. <laughs> Superpowers, man. But no, what I was getting at was you think Owen was like, hey, how about you do it? And he was like, nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not with that people I hired. <laughs> right. Right. We, we got the, the great value riggers to, to set this up. <laughs> like, <laughs> great values and sponsor our show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Great Value Podcast. Great. Now Alex Ocean has something to say about us. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> um, so he, won't anyway. see it t- he won't see it tonight or tomorrow. He's wrestling tonight and wrestling tomorrow. Oh, there you go. That's There you go. Mm-hmm. So so we move into Lance Archer uh, jumping Mox backstage. No. With, or is no. Mox jumping Lance Archer? Yeah. Yep. Mox jumping Lance Archer. They get into it. And then all of a sudden Lance Archer, they get separated. Lance Archer is fucking dink. Headbutts this fucking dude. It, it looked cool. It looked good as shit. <laughs> that headbutt it smacked the fuck out of the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, from there, we move uh, Matt Hardy ringside with his family. What I called it. I called it all the time. It don't work. What? That he's 100% healthy now? Good. It's been no. four fucking weeks since you took that bump. Hey, I'm just letting you know that it was a work because if his wife, whatever her name is, um, was so uh Rebby, Rebby. Is it Rebby or is it Re- Rebby? Re- Re- no, I don't know. Rebby. 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 Yeah. If she was so pissed off at Tony Khan, you know, about work unsafe work environment, why'd she have her three kids ringside with herself there? Yeah. No, whatever. I'm not getting into it with you. Anyway, <laughs> do you want to tell them what happened during this promo? Um <laughs> again, Matt Hardy's getting old and he's stumbling over his lines. And then on the screen, oh, that's another thing with the show. I, I like the show. I, I thought it was really good, you know, and everything like that. But their timing on this show was terrible. Like, um, I know what they tried to do during the OC um, Cody Rhodes match. They tried to time it to where the countdown that Justin Roberts was giving was going to, like, equal, like, the hand of the ref going down. Yeah, yeah, I, the, I know. The ref was a second faster. Yeah. You know, like, I understand that. But with the Matt Hardy promo, you can see that he was stumbling over his lines because the screen didn't change and the, the, you know, the interruption didn't start. So you could see he was trying to grasp at things. Yeah. And then then he started weird. talking over it. Then he started talking over the, the – like, he wasn't acting surprised. Yeah, kind of like how you talk over me all the time. Yeah, well, because I'm smarter. So, um, <laughs> so it, it show cuts to the back, and it shows um, a person in a hoodie, 
with the hood over their head and all the pictures of Matt Hardy and broken Matt Hardy and everything like that. And this person's lighting the pictures on fire. One of the pictures didn't light fully because I don't know why they didn't put the lighter to the other side, but the lighter said twist of hate on it. What Um, do you think is coming from this? I'm telling you, man, I think, I think that he, I think Sammy is going to break off from inner circle and they're going to start like a heel, like broken, like tag team. I would take that. Um, and Sammy confesses that it was him that took him out in the back. He attacked him, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Yeah. I, I'm glad to see Sammy getting back in a feud. I think him just trying to be like the funny little brother in inner circle was getting old. Well, I think that's, I think that's how you, if you do put MJF in inner circle, I think that's how you get Sammy out. Yeah. Have him join Matt Hardy, do like a broken tag team. They would have to build to that. Like if MJF, you know, MJF tell him, Hey, if I take your spot or if I beat you, then I take your spot. Well, it's kind of, like you can already see it happening. Like <clears throat> when he said, "Oh, I forgot your jacket." Oh, you yeah. were lost in the mail. You know, you can already see it's like there's tension building there. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. that's it. Was a little. I'm surprised he didn't grab the microphone. They had Ortiz grab it during that promo. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, oh, excuse you me. Dying over there, man. So I went to go talk, and I hiccup at the same time, and it like traps air, so you get a burp. See, like, <laughs> you got the echoes now? Bah! Yeah. Did I scare you? No. Um, but yeah, I I can see Sammy the one getting out of inner circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to be him. Um, so then we move into uh, you got all the tag teams up on the stage. Something else they could have done backstage. Yeah. Uh, they're pulling names for the number one contenders, Fatal Four Man match. Like, wh- why is Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison on there up there? Was Was Billy and Austin Gunn there? No. Uh, Just like okay, they're nine and zero. Oh. Yeah, on dark. Um, but here, here's my here's my thing. They released the brackets for the uh, the a a m. I was gonna say I was gonna say AXT, the A the AEW, you know, number one contendership, right? You have Phoenix and uh Pentagon battling the first round. But then you have them on the stage for the tag team lottery. Yeah. We know they're not going to win that. Like No, yeah. And they're battling yeah, battling each other. It's... Yeah, it makes no sense. Like <sighs> Some of what they should have done does. they should have done is they should have had only five tag teams standing in a room, kind of like what they do with the Royal Rumble and have people you know pick it you know this and the other, and that one tag team that doesn't get picked have them interfere and cost one of the teams the the, the match and then mm-hmm. start a feud there yeah, no that could have worked that could have worked well um you know, and you get so your four teams are private party mm-hmm. silver and Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Butcher and the Blade and Young Bucks. And the way Tony said Young Bucks just so despairingly, depressingly, he was just like, Young Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my man had his phone broken. He was super kicked. Like, jeez. And then his titties waxed. This guy's just having the worst week of his life. Hey, how about this? How about AEW can fuck around and have Reynolds and Silver win and win the title that full year? <sighs> They wouldn't bless us with that. They know they they're Dude. like we were marks for the show too, but not that big of marks. Dude, like I can see it happening. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. As much as I want it to happen, you know Bucks are winning that match. You know it's gonna be Bucks at full gear. It's gonna be Bucks. It has to be. The way they've been working them lately and pushing them that heel. You know, it's just, but I don't get it. Like, what do you get out of that? Two heels fighting each other. Does one of them eventually go face? Here's my question to you now. When you get to full gear, like let's say Kenny Omega wins, right? Wins the tournament. And he wrestles whoever the, the champion is. 
what match goes on last. Do the Bucks go on last, or do you get Omega and the champion go on last? They'll do something like put Bucks on first. They'll do something like that. They'll put the Bucks on first to open the show. See, the way I would write it, I know you wouldn't like it, but put like let's say the Bucks win the turn the lottery match next week. You have Bucks FTR in the show. Have um, Kenny and whoever the champion is go before that match. Kenny win, win the title, come out and cost Young Bucks the championship, and that's when you make him turn the cleaner. That could work. I just I can't get behind Kenny winning this tournament. Oh, I can. I can. He doesn't need it. That's the thing. No, he doesn't, but I can see him winning it. Yeah, I mean, if, I can see him winning it too, but I can't get behind it. And I wouldn't mind him winning it. That's the thing. That's where we differentiate, my friend. So, who, who else is going to who else would you want to see win it that's in that tournament? You want Joey Janela to win it? No, Adam Cole. Adam Cole's not in it. Or not Adam Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking baked. Adam Page. Because then you can have, like I said, the Page and Mox thing, and then that's how you get Cole or Cole, uh, the cleaner, Kenny Omega, to stand behind Mox the way Mox stood behind him last year. It's, I've, I've heard so many fucking dirt sheets and Reddits that have been right so far with this goddamn show. I think, and, I think you have do what I said, but then you have the rekindling of the Bucks and Adam Page, and them three go up against Omega and two other people. FTR. Like, maybe. I'm done with this show, man. <laughs> because next, <laughs> your favorite match of the night. Yeah, I loved it. Was there a lot of promos on the show, I felt like? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it was the anniversary show there, so they were showing highlights of the first year and everything like that. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just going to give you a quick stat. 952,000 people watched the Kenny Omega – I mean, um, the Cody Orange Cassidy match. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. It's selling. It's selling. People are loving this shit. To where NXT only got 628,000. At the same time, for it was Shotzi Blackheart versus somebody for the number one contendership um, for the ladies' title. Bro, and that is insane. Did you see what NXT is doing? Bringing back Halloween Havoc, hosted by Shotzi Blackheart. What? What is this fucking child's play, bro? Hey, I, you know, I actually kind of feel bad for NXT. Like anyone, <laughs> anyone that gets. Uh, a shot or gets the title, they always get hurt. And Finn Balor is always the one hurt. Yo, they're all getting hurt. Yeah, bro. Uh, what you call it? Um, didn't uh, what's his name get hurt? Killer Cross and now Finn. It's like, <laughs> and they're saying after the surgery, it it's still not healing right. They may have to do another surgery. Like his face is still swollen. Yeah, I don't know. They can't keep the title on him. They're gonna have to drop it again. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have to go through another uh, – if you live in Maine, um, you get – there's three people. But if you live in Kentucky, you have two people. And if you climb the ladder and skip every ring, you know, you might get a shot at a number one contendership. <laughs> oh, my God. So they have two people hurt back-to-back -back for the title. They have – You call up Keith Lee – Way yeah. too fast. Way too far. I don't know what he's doing up there. Dude, he's wearing an adult onesie as a fucking... Like, yeah, <laughs> they changed his music. I think they changed it back, though. Yeah, and they changed his gear. He's wearing a singlet. Yeah. He never wore a singlet before. Never. Um, apparently, McMahon hates his fucking body, so... I mean, look at his... Look at McMahon's track record. Yeah. He makes he makes Otis wrestle on a shirt now. Yeah. Um, no, I, you can't, you lose raw underground. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, it's, 
I don't know what's going on over at WWE right now. He hates he hates Keith Lee's body, but he hated Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson because they didn't work. I'm like what? <laughs> Are you so out of touch with your fucking like company that like, you didn't make it? <laughs> it's my life now, man. It's my life. Anyway, uh, Sheeta Big Swole. Yeah, love this match. No, I said no one ever. Uh, my, note, <laughs> my note is I love Sheeta, hate Swole. Sheeta gets the win. Nyla Rose is shown on camera. She looks angry. Very angry. Um, looks better than my notes. <laughs> I was like, Sheeta versus Big Swole. Sheeta won. <laughs> I just hey, I, can't, I can't get sucks. behind. I can't. I think it's because <clears throat> AEW doesn't have a lot of. I'm, I'm not gonna say a lot of big name women's athletes. I think Chris Statlander getting hurt hurt the women's division of AEW. What do people fucking see in this girl? I don't think she's that good. Well, no, Chris Statlander, but they were doing a big push with her. And now when she got hurt, then Britt Baker had her surgery. All it left was Big Swole and Sheeta and Nyla Rose. Well, you can thank Nyla Rose for a bit for your girl, Chris Statlander, being injured. Mm-hmm. So. But they did sign Eva Lee to a full t- for a long-term contract. Good. She deserves it. And what, what's happened with Abaddon? Just, like, Ugh. Has, has one great like debut and then you called it great. No, I'm just not. I'm just saying like the presence. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not saying the match or the presence coming out. Like everyone was talking about it on, on social yeah. media, you know. And then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I've only seen her twice. Right. Um. So anyway, we move into Eddie Kingston with Lucha Bros making their way to commentary. Okay, I saw Eddie- this is when my, this is when my DVR stopped. All right, um, so this is where your DVR stops. So first we had a promo before the match started. Um, we had a promo of uh, Sean Spears backstage saying that Scorpio that. Sky stole mm-hmm. the spotlight. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Here's my problem with this. I can't – it's kind of like Taz when he does the pulls double duty. He's the manager, but he's also on commentary. Mm-hmm. I don't like Tully with both. Mm-hmm. Either you marinate the two together, you bring Spears in with FTR, and you have a sit down and be like, hey, look, guys, we're all on the same team. We're all here for the same thing. What do you guys think? And they give, like, the three like this, you know? Yeah, I think I think it reminds me of Jimmy Hart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Jimmy Hart was, like, a WWF, WCW, to where he would manage, like, <laughs> come out for – Fucking, I don't know who. I know he came out with Hulk Hogan, but like when he was with Dungeons of Doom, he would be like, yeah. come out with Kevin Sullivan, then Ming, then like the Giant. You know, it's like you never saw them all together. Didn't he come out with Bret Hart at one point? No, I thought he did. No, who else did he come out with? I know he came out with Andre the Giant one time. Yeah. Anyway, um. You know, I don't like that. Either separate them. Oh, and uh, it came out with Ric Flair, I believe, in WWF in 92. Yeah? I th- I'm almost positive. Because that's when he, um, him and Mr. Perfect, he got Mr. Perfect together with Ric Flair. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah. So, there was that interview there for that promo. And then, uh, so then we move into Mox versus Archer. Um, as, so, you know, Mox has that friend who's the uh, security guard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as they're coming out, Archer has him and just fucking flings him through like the tunnel. And then Mox comes running out, um, jumps in. You know, he comes out of his favorite door way up at the top there. <laughs> it's almost so not kayfabe anymore. It's like, how does how do they know to play the fucking music? How does he know when to walk through the fucking door? Go mm. behind the curtain like everybody else, bro. Stop being that fucking guy who's like, I just got done taking the shit. You, you know what's funny if you watch being the elite that door like okay mox comes out so if you picture yourself going into it directly to the right that's the dark orders um clubhouse they call it 
It's oh, literally really? like a like a bar area and everything like that, and that's their clubhouse. It's literally. Oh, great. nice! That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you send that to me? Whatever video it was, if you can find it. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Dope. Thanks. So anyway, so he comes out of his little door there, um, and uh, he goes right in the ring, hits a paradigm shift, and gets a two count right out the gate. There were a couple spots in the match where he did a paradigm shift off of the apron. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the two tables, it, the landing was horrible. It looked like Gronk trying to take that ten foot bump. Mox almost looked like he was scared to like go into the tables. It was weird. Like for being a guy who does that shit all the time, he looked a little nervous like going to that table. I don't now, know why. Was he, was he nervous for going through the tables, or was he was he nor- nervous that the person that he was going through it with doesn't go through tables that much? I think that's what it was. He was almost afraid how uh, Archer was in a land, I think. Right, right. He was trying yeah. to brace and brace Archer rather yeah. than try to take it himself, yeah. So basically what happens, um, whatchamacallit, he goes up, hits him with the blackout. Okay. Lance Archer hits him with the blackout. Uh, Mox kicks out. And then Lance goes and does this other move. And as he's going through, Ar- uh Mox kind of rolls through, hits him with the paradigm shift. He kicks out a paradigm shift, and then uh, he locks in that bulldog choke. Mm -hmm. And he gets up from the bulldog choke, stands straight up. And I don't know how it happened. It was really weird. But he almost got like a uh, a, – oh, shit. I'm fucking blanking. I'm blanking. Give me a second. I'm trying to play it in my head. Like a guillotine? No, it was it was a roll up from the blackout. It's like he went down for like the pin, and Mox kind of oh. rolled behind. It okay. was weird. It was a weird ass. Like it was a weird ending to the match. I thought the match ended horribly, but he kind of got a cheap three count out of it. Okay, he got like a really cheap three count out. So of how it. many times was the paradigm shift hit throughout the whole match? Mm-hmm. I think four, four or five times. And how long was the match? About 15 minutes. So every five minutes, four and a half minutes, a finisher was hit. Uh-huh. Okay. What you All getting right. at there? Just just wondering. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just, I'm just wondering. I, I was just wondering because if the match was only around 15 minutes um, – it just shows that some of those promos could have been cut or like shortened. Oh yeah, it definitely you know? match felt almost rushed. Right. But then the end of the match is where it got kind of interesting and fun because you know Eddie Kingston, don't forget about him. Mm-hmm. He's up there and the whole match he's praising Mox. Praising Mox. He's like, you know, we ain't really run with Lance, but you know, Mox was that boy and Mox was our boy and Indies and then he went up to the land of the entertainers and he kept telling Tony he was gonna slap his lips off him. Every fucking two minutes, he was so funny. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, so at the end, Lance after the cheap three count, uh, Lance kicks Mox in the face, puts him out, and then you hear Eddie go, "Go get him! Go get him! Go save him!" So they run down there with chairs. Penta or Phoenix hits uh, Archer. Oh man, we're not recording. We're not recording. What? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, I was like, what? It says recording. And then, <laughs> don't fuck with me, man. Don't fuck with me. I'm trying to get through this. I'm really concentrating right now for you. <laughs> so anyway, so you pop Phoenix, uh, or yeah, Phoenix pops uh, Lance with a chair. Lance takes it stiff, just stands up, looks at him. And Jake's like, hey, man, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Let's go. So he gets him out of there. And then Eddie gets so on the mic. So Phoenix hits Archer with a chair. and To Jake- save Mox. And Jake pulls Archer out and says, And go to the back. Okay. Best writing I've ever seen. Who's writing this shit? Jerry Lynn? I, I, you can tell he didn't get it from Paul Heyman. First off, <laughs> if, if that was me, if this was me writing it, I would not have Phoenix hit. I would have had Pentagon and Phoenix stand in between Moxley and act like they're going to hit Archer and then turn and hit Mox. Yeah, it was a little weird. To attack Lance Archer and kind of make an enemy out of him, especially if you're going to have him just walk off, you're then you're making it seem like a chair shot is weak. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was bad for everybody right there. Didn't mm-hmm. look good for anybody. 
Um, so anyway, so Eddie picks up Mox. He walks down the ring, and he's like, Mox, you're our boy. You, you've been carrying this show for a year, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, they raise hands, and he's celebrating with Mox, and he's like, look, man, we're all cool. We're all cool. And he hits him with a Judas effect, literally a spinning back elbow. Hmm. Stops him. Yeah, just jacking moves over here. So then uh, he fucking locks him up in a bulldog choke, and the rest are trying to come out. And uh, and uh, you got Phoenix and Penta holding them back. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, 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 you stay back. You stay back to the refs, right? And then he gets up. Eddie gets up, starts mouthing off, takes the belt, throws it at Mox, kind of clocks him pretty good with the belt. Mm-hmm. Like, it hurt. Yeah. Uh, and then it faded out as uh, Kingston was talking shit. So um, there was only one curse word, I think, throughout the whole night, and that came from Miro. Nope, not true. Who else cursed? Um, Jericho did. Jericho cursed? What did he say? Yeah, he said shit as well. Did he? So we had two shit bombs tonight. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice, two shit bombs. Well, guess what? The show oh, was and, kind of a shit and, bomb. And MJF said mother effer. <laughs> That's MJF for you. Mm-hmm. Mother effer. He didn't say fucker. We're not editing it. He said mother effer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Anyway, yep, yeah, that was AEW. You know, and it was scary when you said we weren't recording because I had a message on my thing earlier for Zoom and I didn't read it yet. So and it was something about updating it. And I was like, oh, fuck. So you kind of scared me when you said I wasn't recording, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, man. That's it. All right. It's bedtime You got now. anything? Yeah, no. it's bedtime. You got to work tomorrow? I have to work tomorrow. And a hurricane game comes at 12. And I've already taken Sudafed, so I'm kind of like loopy right now. Oh, shit. Well, Mm -hmm. that's it for me. (laughs) Hey, guess what? Chicken butt. Knock, knock. Oh, I got to show you this. Hold on. Birdie taught me a joke. What's your name? Joe. What's this? Nose. What am I holding? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> y'all kick his little ass, man! <laughs> I'll kick his ass. I don't care how old he is. <laughs> <laughs>